Hey everyone, John Lorden here. I know we're supposed to have a Johnny Vlogs today, but we have a very uh, important development to discuss in the case of missing person Julia Jacobson and her dog Boogie. Um, this is the third video that I've done about this case. There's a lot of things that looked very odd about this case right from the start. Of course, one of those major things being that she went to visit her ex-husband and he is the last person that had seen her uh, alive um, or at all until she went missing. Then he was arrested and there's a lot of things that happened that made it seem like, um, I don't know if, if he has officially confessed, but uh, there's been a lot of activity around it that makes it seem like Julia was indeed deceased. Uh, today we have some news right from the city of Ontario. So let's go ahead and start there. Uh, this is at www.ontarioca.gov, and this is an official press release from them. Human remains found in a shallow grave. During the continued search of Cactus City area, and with cooperation from suspect Dalen Ware, who is, uh, Dalen is Julia's ex-husband, Ontario detectives were led to the discovery of a shallow grave. The grave contains the suspected remains of Julia Jacobson and her dog, Boogie. The remains were discovered near the I-10 freeway and Box Canyon Road with the aid of the San Bernardino County Sheriff's cadaver dog, Ellie. The remains found are consistent with a female adult and a dog. Uh, now, this is what's really important. They're still looking for information on this incident. Uh, anyone with information regarding the incident is asked to call the Ontario Police Department at 909-986-6711. Uh, I'll have all this in the description box below as well. Uh, Detective Ruben Espinosa can also be contacted at 909-395-2894 or Detective Brant Devi at 909-395-2715. They also have a number here for reporting it anonymously by calling WeTip at 1-800-78-CRIME, or you can even go online at www.wetip.com. And it's a bit of an interesting development that um, they're asking for further information here when it seems like her ex-husband is actually cooperating with them, at least enough for them to find her body. Um but if they're still asking for information on this, it seems like they're still trying to maybe bolster a case up against him. And we really don't have any details in terms of what the relationship is like between him and the police right now. Um, is he doing this for hopefully getting some type of lesser charge for himself? Or so? We have no idea what's motivating him to cooperate with them in this way. But it's just really interesting to me that they're still looking for help. They're still looking for information on what happened around this. So if you do happen to have some information, please do the right thing and pass it along using the contact information in the description box below. Uh, we're going to jump over to an article at HuffingtonPost.com um, just to see if we can get a little more sense of the detail here. Um, they're noting that her ex-husband, Dalen Ware, was arrested on suspicion of murder in Arizona last month. And they're specifically, once again, concurring with the um, Ontario Police Department, information from where led police to an area known as Cactus City. From other reports that I've seen, uh, they were searching an approximately six mile wide area um, with Ellie the dog, and that's where they did indeed find her remains. And we're, we're all assuming at this point that they are her remains. There hasn't been a positive identification done on that yet. So there is some slight possibility, and I would call it extremely slight, that this isn't her. But considering where the information's coming from, considering that the remains were found with the remains of a dog, um, I think it's, you know, it's very likely that this is indeed Julia. Jacobson served two tours of duty in Iraq and one in Bosnia as a finance officer, according to her obituary, which ran November 1st uh, in the Bismarck Tribune in her home state of North Dakota. And once again, this is what I mean, This how this case is very interesting. They already ran her obituary. They've already had a memorial service. Um, all indicators were pointing towards someone was giving the family some type of information that was basically saying, look, Julia has indeed passed away because there was a lot of steps that have been taken. And this is before the discovery of her body. Not quite typical for what I see in cases like this. So they must have had some very, very strong information. She was awarded the Bronze Star for her service in a combat zone. 
She married Ware in 2014 and divorced him in 2016, citing irreconcilable differences. Police didn't reveal a motive for the killing. A very interesting question at this point. Um, what could it be? I mean, from what we know of Julia, she was looking to move away from the San Diego area. She had found a new job. She was literally getting out of California. Uh, was there something about that that had upset him? Um, you know, considering that they were only married for such a short period of time, I can't imagine that they had some kind of brutal divorce settlement where, you know, a bunch of uh, money was taken from one side and given to the other or something. Typically in divorces of this short of a period, um, I think they can handle those in a pretty clean and cut way. I don't think that um, and, and we haven't heard of any significant gain that was made, uh, for example, by Julia in terms of, you know, the value of a house that Dalen had previously owned or something along those lines. I'm just really racking my brain for what the motive is uh, in this situation. And unfortunately, that information is still not public. Uh, we do see here that a girlfriend accused Ware of domestic abuse and sought a restraining order against him back in 2014, according to the Chula Vista local ABC station, KGTV. Police believe Jacobson was killed the day after she vanished. Her abandoned car was found near her home a few days after she disappeared. And once again, we're getting this little glimpse into detail uh, how do they know that it was the day after she vanished? How do they know it wasn't the day? Because she was traveling that morning literally to go meet up with him in the Ontario area. Um, they have some detail here that they are obviously not making public. They're asking for information to still put together what seems like is going to be, you know, the formal charges against him. So it, it would just lead me to believe just based on what I'm seeing that's being put out there that for some reason, their case against him is not absolutely solid, but it seems like he's confessed to it, which would usually put that case on pretty solid footing. So I'm really, really interested in what's going on with the dynamics behind the scenes on this one. Unfortunately, we're not hearing any insight into that. I don't know if we really will uh, until some pending charges do happen. Uh, I mean, he's already been charged with murder, but until a case happens where we can actually look for what look through what evidence is presented and then maybe get a better idea of what the police were working with at the time and maybe have some type of understanding of what the motive is here. It's really a shame in this case that we're talking about the loss of a life in this way and her dog. Um, I mean, it's just, it's a horrible thing. And we have no idea what the cause is. We have no understanding of the reasoning for why he had to do this to her. It's really, really terrible. And maybe we will never understand it. I'm not sure. Now, if you did watch the previous videos, which I will have links to in the description box below, um, we did donate, thank you to my Patreon and PayPal supporters um, to this, and they far exceeded their goal. They were looking to raise $20,000. They raised $21,625. So I felt like honoring Julia in some way, but I don't know that giving to this GoFundMe um, is the most appropriate or best way for me to do that, but I'm going to have a link to this down below for you guys if you want to donate to this to hopefully offset funeral costs and other costs that her family has incurred through this search for her. But what I figured might be a very cool way of honoring her memory is making a donation to the Wounded Warrior Project. And if you know anything about the Wounded Warrior Project, this is for veterans that are wounded in battle. This is to help give them support once they come back. Um, I think doing this in memory of Julia is something that I, I believe someone with her experience would be proud of, and I hope that it honors her in an appropriate way. So once again, thank you to my PayPal and Patreon supporters for allowing me to do things just like this. As soon as I'm done filming this video, I'm gonna make a donation to the Wounded Warrior Project. I'll have a link down below. If you do the same, um, I hope that you'll mark that you're making this gift in, in honor and memory of Julia Jacobson, because that's exactly what I'm gonna do as I get this done today. Um, really tough month on these cases, brain scratchers. I know we've had a lot of recent missing person cases that we've covered on the channel that are coming to this conclusion. But remember, keep in mind what the families always tell us, that it is far worse for them to not have the answers, that once they get the answers, they can at least begin to move forward, begin to get through that process of grieving. Um, this one is just really, really tough because like I said, we just don't know 
what the rationale is here. And I can't imagine that any reason that came out of his mouth would make us feel any better about any of this, um, except to make us judge his personality in some weird way. So I don't even know if it's going to be helpful, but it just feels like a real hole for me personally to not know why her life was, was taken in this way. But for all of her family and friends out there, uh, of course, my heart goes out to you. And I think I could speak for a large part of the Brain Scratch audience when I say that um, we're really sorry that you guys lost Julia and and Boogie. Uh, it seems like Boogie brought a lot of joy to her life as well. And it's just, um, it's really, really tragic. It really breaks my heart. So... Thank you guys for caring enough about these cases to come back to watch these videos, to get the updates, to donate if you can, uh, either directly to me or directly to these cases. I truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, it makes things like this just a little bit lighter to know that there are people out there not necessarily connected directly to these cases that care enough to um, take action or to be a part of these stories in some way. So thank you for being one of those people. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you back here tomorrow on the Lord and Arts channel.